Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk. Now, Flat Earthers are well known for getting things wrong and never getting anything right. However, today is going to be a little bit different. You see, I've found a couple of Flat Earthers that are arguing against each other, so of course they're going to get things right. The Flat Earthers that I'm talking about, of course, are Dell and Rachi, and they both make some good points. Dell does an okay-ish job of pointing out what's happening when it comes to gravity, although he doesn't realise that he's actually doing that. And Rachi does a good job of defending Newtonian gravity. Now, neither of them actually believe in gravity or properly understand gravity, although I'd say that Rachi probably has a better understanding of gravity than Dell. However, Rachi, if you are watching this, you are not completely off the hook because you do get things wrong. But so does Dell. Dell, here's a small tip. Maybe turn another light on so it becomes easier to see you, because otherwise you look like you're just a thing in the shadows. I'm going to show you a little video that I recorded earlier on with Marty. Um, we're going to have a talk about it. Okay, eat to bed. It's only eight minutes long, so I'm going to get to that and then we'll have a wee chat about it. So I encourage you to pay attention and have a think about this, okay? All right, so I'm going... Wait, do I need to translate what he just said there? Because I realise that his accent is way more difficult to understand than my lack of accent. So in case you didn't catch it, he said that he's gonna show us a video that's about eight minutes long and to pay attention. Now I am going to cut down that video because I think the point can be made better if we take out a lot of the fluff. Marty here is gonna demonstrate how liquid and gas behave in a situation of acceleration. We ready? Uh -huh. What we see in the situation there is that the air references the directionality of acceleration. So that being that the water gets thrown to the back of the bottle and the air gets propelled forward. So the air shows you the direction of acceleration. Okay, in this situation he is 100% correct. Now, why does this happen? So the reason why this happens is due to inertia and how the forces act upon the fluids. So as we all know, everything in the universe is quite lazy and would prefer to just keep on doing what it is doing. So if something is in motion, it would prefer to stay in motion, and if something is stationary, then it would prefer to stay stationary. Now, when you accelerate a bottle of water, the thing that is being accelerated there is the bottle. Now, the contents of the bottle do get accelerated but that is from the bottle itself. This is because it's the end of the bottle that is pushing all the fluid in the bottle when it accelerates. Now because water has higher density than air, it is much easier to displace air. So when air and water are both trying to go to the same spot, the water is easily going to push the air out of the way. But the most important part here is all this happens because it's the bottle that is pushing the stuff within the bottle. So the point being to this, that, um it's gravity is claimed to be a force or a fictitious force or you could think of it as a force that acts upon objects that accelerates them towards the earth right now as we've just shown and demonstrated when we have acceleration acting so in the case of the car the car is the, the, the thing that accelerates, that acts upon me, Marty, and Marty holding the object, which is the bottle with the liquid and the gas within it. So it's being accelerated, and what we see is a shift. We see the water going to the, the back and the air denoting the directionality of the acceleration. Now, if gravity is claimed to be a force that accelerates objects, well, when we let objects go, we should see the exact same thing happening. We should see the air move to the bottom and the liquid to the top because the air shows the direction of acceleration. Three, two, one. Okay, so Dell gets a few things wrong here, but first I want to mention what happened with the water in that bottle because it was a little bit hard to see. So the water in that bottle, relative to the bottle, didn't really move at all. So why is that? So the answer here, of course, is that Dell doesn't really understand gravity, not in the Newtonian sense, nor in the Einstein sense. However, Rachie does seem to understand what's going on here, so I'm going to let her explain it. Okay, so this is our container, and we have water in our container with some air at the top. Now, if, again, the container is being accelerated down, so as it gets to, as the top of the container here comes to here, but there is no acceleration on the water, 
the water is not accelerating, then what's going to happen? The water's going to build up at the back, just like with the car when it crashes, when the things go crashing in the boot. It's going to build up here. And then you are going to have air at the bottom. And that's going to be what your container looks like if the water's not accelerating. However, if the water is accelerating, then what you're actually going to end up with is, okay, this time the water is going to be accelerating down at the same rate as the container. Okay, so as we have the container wall here, yeah, and we have the water, and we have the water about this much distance away, so this bit in between is air, we have the water down here. As this container wall accelerates, the top of the container, as the, con the container accelerates down to here, if the water is accelerating at the same rate, you're going to end up with the water here. And there's going to be no displacement at all because they are accelerating at the same rate. They are falling at the same time. If they are falling or accelerating at the same rate, the reference frame and the object inside, then there is going to be no um, displacement. Now, all I can say to that is she is 100% correct there. This is the difference between looking at something like Dell has done and concluding what's happening based on that versus actually knowing why things act that way. So Rachie here gets a gold star. No! Okay Dell, why not? Gravity is claimed to be a force or a fictitious force or you could think of it as a force that acts upon objects that accelerates them towards the Earth. So, Globe Earth proponents are claiming things have been accelerated. The test, the, the, the practical demonstration, doesn't show that. Now, what's the orientation of that? Air at the top, water at the bottom. Therefore, yes, upwards. that must be the conclusion. Okay, so here's the thing. Dell clearly doesn't understand gravity in the sense of Einstein, because Rachie's explanation is an explanation of how gravity does work under Newton, but not under Einstein. According to Einstein, I am being accelerated up at 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, when you hear something like that, your first reaction might be something along the lines of this. The planet Earth is not accelerating upward. What direction again is up? So the answer to that, of course, is it's the direction that points away from the strongest gravity well that you are in. Here on Earth, it's away from Earth. If you go far enough away from Earth, then it will be away from the Sun. Now this is a difficult concept to grasp, but what you have to remember is that space is four-dimensional, not three-dimensional. We are constantly moving through time, and it turns out that space and time are interlinked. Now we call this space-time. I know it's a very original name. but in the presence of mass, space-time bends. Now, because of this, what might look like a curved path through 3D space turns out to be a straight path through 4D space-time. Now, we are constantly moving through time. However, when you move through time in a straight direction and space-time is curved, well, then it appears in 3D space like you're accelerating. Now, you're not actually accelerating because you're following a straight line through 4D space-time, but it appears like you are in 3D space. Now following this logic, you have to conclude that in 4D space time, the ground is accelerating up at 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, because this can be quite confusing and I know that there will be some people that still won't understand it, let me try and use a diagram to help. If you're traveling along one of these long lines here, then you are traveling through time. If you're traveling along one of these shorter lines, you are traveling through space. Now, as you can see, this very crude space-time thing here is curved. So if we were to draw a straight line through it, we'd see that it initially goes fairly straight through time. But as time goes on, it starts moving more through space. In order for it to remain stationary through 3D space, or in this case it would be 1D space, you would need to accelerate it. On Earth, the acceleration through 4D space time to keep us stationary in 3D space comes from the ground. The ground accelerating upwards at 9.81 meters per second squared keeps us stationary through 3D space, 
as counterintuitive as that may seem. Now I realise that flat earthers will probably have a difficult time grasping this concept. Hell, even if you're a globe earther you might have a difficult time grasping this concept. That is why it is fine to use Newton where it works, like here on Earth. So I will still be giving Rachi that gold star. And Del, you get a bronze star for sort of realising what Einstein realised and that is the absence of a gravitational field is no different from being in freefall. Now you might be wondering, why were the two flat earthers, Del and Rachi, having a disagreement? Well the answer is, Del thinks that his experiment disproves relative density disequilibrium. People are so enamoured by their own bias. People have bought into you know, all these mantras, stationary immovable, relative density disequilibrium, all these mantric statements. But the practical references show us something totally different. And people don't like it. Rachi, the object is density, this accelerates down. So density news are a force of acceleration. Are you kidding me on? Don't do what the Globers do and straw man me saying density's a force. I did not say density was a force, Del. I said relative density, disequilibrium is a force, relative density, do you know what I mean? Meaning, not density on its own, relative density. That gives the force. And this can be shown with literally everything and anything. Why does an anvil float in mercury? Because it's less dense than the mercury. Well, yes-ish, but actually no. It is because the volume of mercury that it is able to displace is lower than the volume of the anvil. But I'm sure the question that you are all asking is, is Dell right? Does Dell's experiment disprove relative density disequilibrium? Well, I've had an extensive thought on this, and sadly, I don't think so. Unfortunately, that means that for a second, I'm going to have to defend relative density disequilibrium. Okay, relative density disequilibrium, what is it? It means that if an object is more dense than the medium that it is in, then it will go down. If it's less dense, then it will go up. Simple stuff. In the case of this bottle, the water inside of it is more dense than the air, so it goes down. And the bottle itself is more dense than the surrounding air, so it wants to go down as well, but it can't because I'm holding onto it. Now you might think that if I drop the bottle, well the air outside of the bottle due to its relative density disequilibrium will be pushing the bottle down, so the water inside the bottle will want to go upwards. Unfortunately, that is not the case because there would be relative density disequilibrium inside the bottle, forcing the water downwards. Now even though Dell's experiment does not disprove relative density disequilibrium, it still has its flaws. The main thing being is that if relative density disequilibrium were true, the weight of this shouldn't change based on how much water is in it. Let me explain. So if relative density is true, then I think we can all agree that the air is exerting a force on the water, pushing the water to the bottom. I think we can all agree on that. Now if I add more water to this, well the surface area of the water that is touching the air still remains the same. And the density of both the air and the water are still the same. So why would there be a greater force? And even if we were to somehow grant that there is a greater force internally, that does not translate to a greater force externally. Because if the air pushes the water down at a greater force, then the water also pushes the air upwards at a greater force. This would result in the bottle being the same weight regardless of how much water is put into the bottle. So why does the bottle weigh more when you have more water in it? It's because of how flat earthers think. You see, flat earthers think about the density of the object and thus the force that is applied to the object as the overall density between the air, the water, and the plastic. This means that somehow the force that is applied to the overall object is the sum of the densities within the object. So despite the plastic having the same relative density to the air regardless of whether it's filled with water or not, somehow the air still applies more of a force if it's filled with water. And to me, that makes no sense. How can the relative density between the plastic and the air, because the plastic is what's having the force applied to it, be different based on the contents inside of this bottle? Rachi, just say that there's 9.81 meters per second acceleration of objects towards the ground. That solves everything. You don't need to invoke relative density that way. A 9.81 meters per second acceleration does explain why an anvil will float in mercury. Because of buoyancy. Despite me not agreeing with Dell's overarching point here, I do agree with something he said. People are so enamoured by their own bias. People have bought into all these mantras, stationary immovable, relative density disequilibrium, all these mantric statements. But the practical references show us something totally different. And people don't like it. So Rachi, if you're watching this, think about this for a bit. 
If there were a 9.81 meters per second acceleration towards the ground of everything, how would that eliminate the need for relative density? If you can work that out, then you'll realize that there is no need for relative density. And I believe in you. I believe that you can work this out. You are smarter than Dell. Okay, that's not saying much, but you've got this. Stop being absolutely ridiculous. It's people like you that make this whole thing very difficult because you're waffling about stuff that you don't even comprehend, making all sorts of silly assertions and claims about absolute nonsense. Okay, Dell is trying to criticize Rachel here by saying that her claims are nonsense, but what he doesn't realize is that all flat earth claims are nonsense. Rachie's, Dell's, they're all nonsense. You know, there is a reason why flat earthers abandoned the 9.81 meters per second acceleration upwards of the earth. Because in order to make that work, you need something like Einstein's theory of relativity. Otherwise it all falls apart. One of the things you said during your stream was that the object should fall 9.8 meters in the first second. That's not what 9.8 meters per second per second means. 9.8 meters per second squared. It does not mean that the object will fall 9.8 meters in the first second. So again, you are wrong there, but yet I'm the one that's muddy in the waters and don't know what I'm talking about or whatever. Rachie, can you please stop making good points? You're supposed to be a flat earther. You're supposed to say silly stuff. And then I make the good points. You're taking my job by making all the good points. Why does a ship float on water? Because it's less dense than the water. Why does a brick fall in air because it's more dense than the air. Why does a helium balloon go up in the air? Because it's less dense than the air. Explain these using your Earth accelerating up down and objects not actually accelerating. Please explain that to me. Okay, it's actually very simple. If Earth is accelerating upwards, then everything on it accelerates upwards with it, including the atmosphere. Now, when it comes to the helium balloon, well, the atmosphere being pushed upwards also pushes that upwards. And keep in mind that the atmosphere has more of a desire to stay in place because of its inertia than the helium balloon. Like when Dell drives the car, the water, which is the more dense stuff, displaces the air, which is less dense. And hopefully that explains it. Okay, so who wins here, Dell or Rachi? Well, Dell did have the most correct conclusion. However, as demonstrated by Rachi, the way that he arrived at that conclusion was fallacious. Now Rachi did have good arguments in the beginning. However, she does fail to recognize the consequences of Dell's conclusion. Her rebuttal to Dell's conclusion does come from a place of personal incredulity. She also fails to apply the same scrutiny that she applies to Dell to her own arguments. However, I think that Rachi understands the reasons for why things happen the way they do way better than Dell does which is more important. And also, Dell, if you're watching this, try to understand why things happen the way they do. You would have won if you had have understood. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know who you think won. Was it the upside down triangle or was it zero? As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Shaki, Jetta Lone, Nathaniel Muller, Vermont1777, Wolfie, Mori, Gramel Ghost, Kid Vicious, Sacha Campbell, definitely not NASA, Craig D'Amelio and Richard M. Chapman. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.